Hey gang, welcome back to Big Board. Looking at Last Blitzkrieg again. We're looking at the beginning of turn uh, one. Oh, sorry, turn two, the 17th of December. And not a whole lot has changed. A few subtle things have changed, but not a lot has changed as far as you know uh, on the map. And what I thought I might do here is kind of have a look at the, both sides potential strategies for this turn and the sorts of predicaments that they've put themselves in or, or have been placed in and um, see if that uh, leads us to any sorts of uh, thoughts or conclusions as the case may be. So hopefully it'll be five or six minute video and we can all get on. I want to get back to actually playing uh, while some of the rules are somewhat fresh. On the right hand side of the screen here you can see these coordination markers. And uh, part of my activity in the first turn was to try and obviously press uh, in as uh, far as we can with uh, the German forces with the 12th uh, Force Grenadier and uh, you know then power through with Piper and or uh, 150th Panzer, whoever could get there first, right? And um, we managed to you know break a, a fairly decent hole in the line, and you can see the results of that there. There's a you know there are units all the way up here, and command radius is another interesting thing in this game that we can we can talk about at some other time. Um, and as a part of that activity, I, I got a little fixated on bouncing headquarters. So I bounced the 99th Infantry Headquarters and then uh, bounced it again along with the 2nd Infantry Headquarters. And thinking that that was going to be really cool because it removes prepared defense. Well, what do you, what do you, when, what's the net impact of that? Well, the net impact of that is for the balance of the turn, the formation whose headquarters was bounced has uh, loses the DRM on the combat results. So, you know, it's probably worth doing, but it's not worth killing yourself over or putting yourself in a difficult situation, which, you know, arguably up here, I may or may not have done. So uh, what it has done is, is, you know, caused a massive bit of a you know, massive gaping hole here. Uh, the the second infantry was the only formation that uh, activated of any use for the allies in the second turn so that caused some problems so the, the coordination markers and the lack of prepared defense the last turn was beneficial to the germans but i wouldn't say it was a be all and end all of uh, a focused part of your activities in a, in a given turn what is important with these coordination markers is that it, it directly impacts your snafu role, which if you recall from my uh, very, I think my very first post on this before I played the game, I talked to you about combat trains, headquarters, and the snafu role, and how those things are intertwined, and the, the distance and relationship uh, between the headquarters and the combat train, and projecting your command radius forward, uh, it's going to uh, it's going to be impacted by uh, the snafu roll is going to be impacted by that and coordination is one of the DRMs that can occur to a uh, to a snap to a snafu roll. <coughs> snafu is going to give you if you pass your snafu roll, you're going to get to the ability to move your full movement allowance and to uh, have two objectives that you can place versus a partial or a fail, which would be less. Uh, you only move half in a partial, for example. Coordination uh, applies a minus one to the die roll. Uh, you need a seven for a pass, and you're already subtracting one uh, for the headquarters that are fatigued, and you're, you're uh, then now subtracting another one. So now I need a nine to pass and be fully functional and fully capable as a formation. So that's now put a little bit of uh, concern into, you know, how you do this, right? How you move your forces together. You can't just go higgledy piggledy through the battle space. Now, I knew this was going to happen because this is the choke point here and it just is what it is and we're all going to end up close to each other. But perhaps a little more efficiency on organization, you know, not having this, uh, this unit here or this unit here would allow us not to be coordinated between these two uh, formations. Coordination basically occurs Actually, that's not that's not coordinated. Now that I look at it, because it's only when you're stacked with an enemy with your, uh, a different formation, or when your headquarters are stacked, like that bad boy, or your headquarters is 
uh, within two hexes of another enemy, well, another uh, allied uh, force of yours. In fact, so they are in, they are in freaking uh, coordination because this is within two hexes of this, as are these. So now the cool thing about coordination is that when you come to uh, uh, activate your formation, you just go, okay, I'm paying for my coordination errors, the, the error of my ways. Pick this up. Pay, pay the DRM when you try to roll, do your snafu roll, and away you go. You uh, you uh, you take it off the board, and you only pay for it one time. So if you go for a second activation, you're not going to have this uh, negative effect. You obviously will still have the uh, fatigue effect. So that if that plays into uh, plays into the game uh, fairly significantly. I just realized we're already at six minutes. So what I'm going to do is just probably wrap this up here and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the, we'll talk about the, the strategies for the two teams or the two sides and we'll see what, uh, what, the, what potential might be here in the turn and then we can obviously, we'll, we'll follow up when I finish the, the next turn at some point in the near future. So coordination <clears throat> is painful, particularly when you start applying uh, the fatigue the fatigue factors in there as well. I can see as the as the game progresses, and uh, perhaps hopefully things will actually uh, sp spread out a little bit. We'll have less coordination, but our, certainly our fatigue will be higher because we've got to have this trade off between having fatigue and not having fatigue, and uh, and how brittle brittle does that make your force's ability to continue to be a, an effective fighting force. Uh, failing your roles or uh, or um, only getting partial uh, results is not going to be uh, a means to success for the allies nor uh, for the germans so uh, the uh, just real quickly the uh, allied formations that are uh, coordinated there's two there there's one down here they ended up uh, getting getting too close together here and if I was going to be a nice guy, I'd say yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd move that. But these guys uh, failed their their activation roll, so they couldn't move. And this was, was a, a retreat, and that's where we retreated to. That pops us into that coordination mode. All right, that's the story. Let's come back and we'll look at uh, potential strategy, strategies for both sides. Talk to you soon.